I'm Gary. What's up guys? I'm Rob. And today, this is incredible. We're at the Alchemist Brewery in Waterbury, Vermont. Now, let's go inside and see what's going on. We're here with uh, Joel Hartman. Joel Hartman, uh, mm -hmm. lead canner here at Alchemist Brewery in Waterbury, Vermont. And uh, we're very excited, as you can see, y'all, man. What a facility this is. It's closed to the public right now. But, um, uh, so, uh, how long have you been here? Oh, uh, let's see. We got in this space in December 2010. Uh, we had the group pub as well. Yes. And this was just going to be like a little side thing because everyone's always asking, you know, if they could take our beer home. Yeah. Uh, especially the heavy topper. So, we started out with four fermenters, four 15 barrel fermenters. And we thought maybe someday we'll have eight. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, you guys are expanding too, I see. A new group up coming in 2016? Uh, another cannery. cannery. Yeah, oh, another okay. cannery, yep. And so, I, yeah, yeah. We'll keep making the heavy topper here. And then the new cannery will make uh, some new flavors. And yeah, we'll also have a visitor center. Um, as this ended up being a little bit too small mm -hmm. and we didn't have enough parking for yeah. the traffic we were getting. So yeah. we're going to build that one to be able to come in. Center, right? Yeah, we yeah. did. But like I said, it was just too much traffic. Yeah. We didn't have the parking. And so people were walking across the highway and parking yeah. everywhere. And it just, it was unsafe. It's the, what we right. Right. Someone was going to get hurt and we exactly. don't want that. So the new place is going to be perfect. All right. Yeah, we, I can't and, wait for it. You know, oh, that'd be a lot of fun. We're building it from the ground up, so it's really oh, going to be right. neat. Awesome. Yeah, we got in here in 2010 in December and um, built it out to, to the point where we had our first batch of beer to release to the public in uh, September, I believe. And oddly enough, we canned that batch of beer the day after Irene, yeah. which destroyed, destroyed the group home. Yeah. So the timing... Uh, it was kind of amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very rarely, um, we've been, you know, doing some small batches of some of the flavors we're working on for the new brewery. Yeah, yeah, Focal Banger. Like yeah, Focal yeah. Banger, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you did a truck sale, you know, popping We did those truck yeah. sales, and part of the reason for those is so we can play with some of those recipes and uh, try them. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people are here to like it, but never yeah. have it, never. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, we like it. So we got uh, the brew house, and uh, one. One cool thing we're doing here is uh, side streaming a lot of the brewery byproducts and waste. Okay. So that's what you see these kind yeah. of containers around, and you'll see these blue barrels, you know, everything that, you know, from yeast to spent hops um, to even beer waste is, you know, what's left in a hose after you're mm -hmm. going to transfer. We collect it all. Okay. And then uh, you'll see there's two more containers over here and a bunch more of these barrels. And every day, uh, a gentleman, local gentleman comes and pumps it all and he takes it to a digester facility down in Randolph where it gets wow. made into electricity and heat and solid oh, and then he also does compost. That's absolutely cool. And yeah. then uh, all of our spent grain goes to a local farm and up feeds the cows. Yeah, and it doesn't go down the drain. Right, yeah. That's awesome. That's good, yeah. All right. This is really small in the world of canning. <gasps> up until this is a, up until about 10 years ago or 15 years ago, you couldn't can on the scale that you can now. The only way to can was with you know a very big machine that did hundreds of cans a minute and had to be a big brewery. Right. It's a pretty efficient little machine. You know, the cans get rinsed, they get turned upside down. You can see there. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they'll come through, and then uh, those first five 
fillers coming down or just to purge the can with CO2 to okay. get the air out. Right. And then it'll let the five that just got filled out and then the five that were purged will move into the filling position and they'll get filled and then the lid goes on there and they just get seamed in the single head seamer. We do about 32 cans a minute. Wow. Yeah. That's what well, got for, so. Yeah. Uh, huh. yeah. Hands in. So we'll run this for about eight or nine hours on a canning day and make 15,000 cans, which sounds like a lot, but it's really. So it's like, always oh, out every time you go to the store. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you put all this beer yeah. out yeah. and it yeah. runs yeah. out it's every like week. Two hours. Yeah. 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 Just so everyone knows I'm watching. <laughs> That's Even good. If I'm not it. next yeah. to you, I'm probably all of you. It's all storage now, but this was sort of our self tour area. People would come in here and we had signs, you know, explaining different parts of the brew process. This way. Yeah, I've always seen it, you know, I never actually, you know, so happy to be here. There was a couple taps. We had that growler filler machine over there. But yeah. Was that how you guys sell your four packs? And that, like. Oh, that was like a gift. No, that was like a gift box that we used to sell. Yeah, this was part of the, you know. You could buy, uh, you could put like a t-shirt in the top. Oh, really? Or That's like a cool. koozie would That's fit in cool. there, one of yeah, our cool. koozies. Oh, nice. And then you could give it as a gift, you know, a little gift box. Nice. Oh, nice. You know, when we open the retail shop, you know, we'll have that stuff. Who, who designs all your artwork? We actually, it's kind of a cool thing that we do here. We have our own in-house art director. Oh, yeah? Yep. Oh, nice. And uh, so she does a lot of it. Um, our labels for Hetty Topper and for the new beer, Focal Banger, that's going to be at the new brewery, those were drawn by an artist named Dan Blakesley, okay. really, really cool artist. Yeah, because um, no, I like the artwork on the can. Yeah, I love, yeah. love the, the, the Hetty, you know. Yeah, the, so the yeah, he did the Hetty dude, <laughs> nice. and he did the Focal Banger dude, which is going to be on on that. But so then, how was the Focal Banger? Is that a good beer? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. Oh. Is it? Well, it's, yeah. I think it's better than Hetty Topper. Really? Well, I mean, you know, it's, we came out with it yeah, afterwards. True. So yeah, hopefully see, we learned hopefully something. You're improving, yeah. Hopefully we've made yeah. it better. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Being the brew pub, that, that old Grundy mm. that we had a local <laughs> artist paint. That's cool. I like that. But, uh, yeah, our in-house art director, she does, you know, like, this is, this is her artwork. And, mm -hmm. you know, some of the t-shirts you see on our website, mm -hmm. you know, she's, Design those and draw those and wow. all the bars in town have our beer. Yeah, oh, yeah, I guess yeah, so. yeah. But our distribution is probably only about a 25 mile radius from the yeah. cannery. Yeah. Yeah. You guys do all your own distribution. Yeah, oh, wow. it just made sense for us because yeah. it's such a small amount. And that way, you know, it's great because we can see if we go into a restaurant, we can see you know that it's getting rotated properly right, and you yeah. know. It keeps us closer yeah. to yeah. closer to the end user, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. which is nice. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know, testing it. Do you have anything on tap now? No, there's nothing in there. <laughs> we haven't run that and run that and well, since the since the cannery closed, I just I keep actually different cans of beer in there from different batches that I can test oh, them yeah. down the road. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, nice. They're, they're all labeled and. Oh. It's like, like I said, it's kind of turned into my little laboratory. And we're all here to, when we started out, you know, when we started out, we just had these four fermenters here. All right. And like I said before, you know, when we originally started this, we were like, well, maybe someday we'll get four more. And that would be these four. <laughs> and then we had to start tearing down walls and ripping out ceilings so we could make room for more. And that's, that's now, are good, these though. full right now? Yeah. Yeah, that is cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we keep everything pretty cool. And as soon as something's empty, it's filled within the next day. Time to go, Next yeah. day or two, yeah. yeah. You get it empty, you get it clean, and keep it moving. But these, these things here are the ones we do our special beers in. Oh, all right. Uh, this, or, yeah, like those truck sale beers. Oh, okay. And, like, you know, as we want to start. Now, are the other brews going to come out besides uh, Vocal Banger, uh, Luscious, uh, Crusher? I was reading about another one. What's the other one that you're, that you're doing up? A focal bang and release party coming up, right? Yeah, well, that's a the Petite Mutant. Oh, that's it. It's yeah. a beer that we've done every year for quite a few years now. Um, and <clears throat> it's a, uh, a a Brett beer okay. that's uh, made of cherries. That's interesting. 
and uh, we make it every year when the cherry harvest happens, uh, Montmorency sour cherries. Okay. And so uh, there's a farmer up in St. Albans that we get as many as we can from him and then we make the beer and it usually comes out around February. Okay. So do you guys, have, you guys have people traveling from all over the country just to come out this one beer? Like, is that pretty much how it goes? No, graded number one beer. I mean, yeah. Yeah. the Hattie Cobber. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, boy, you know, well, that's not just us. That's Vermont. You know, Vermont, I mean, it's uh, becoming uh, a beer yeah. destination. Yeah, you is. know, expand as we kept expanding. This originally was a kitchen here. You know, and there was an office over there. So, like I said, we just kept taking up more and more of this space until just going at all. Pretty yeah. much the whole first floor is brewery. So these are usually all running at the same time. Or? Yeah, uh, you know, it's kind of like, you know, every Monday, well, it's a, you know, it's a, it's about two weeks in the fermenter between fermentation and dry hopping and all that. So, like, every week on the same day, they get filled, they either be this side or this side, you know, so this side gets filled one week, this side gets filled the other week. So, have you, been, have you been with the company since the beginning, or what? Yeah, I've worked with the Alchemist for... 11 years. So did you ever think it was going to get this big? No, we never thought. No. Like I said, we really, we were like, we really thought maybe we'd double that original capacity. Right, right. Um, which was 1,500 barrels was our original capacity. And we were like, maybe someday we'll yeah. do 3,000 barrels a year. Now we're at 9,000. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'd walk in here, I'd smell it, I'd be like, I'm thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we have a lot of fun, too, a lot of great people we work with. Yeah, it's like, you guys, it seems yeah. like that, yeah. yeah. That's Matt on and that's the kettle. Okay. So Matt's on your left, kettle's on the right. And then to the right of the kettle is uh, the whirl tank. That's why I call it a three-vessel brew house. Okay. Because it moves mm -hmm. from there to there to there. And then All it right. goes to the fermenter. That's, that's yeah. And it goes up through that tube, and then you can the, see where it drops into the mix. Yeah. yeah, these are our break tanks here. This is where uh, the final resting place before the can. It's where it gets carbonated, and then it goes from there into the can machine. And as you can see, we had to knock out the ceiling to get these in. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see that. up there's our old sign from our group of. Oh yeah. How long is the break? It's here until it gets in the can. Uh, sits sits a week. Yeah. In the break, sits a week at conditioning, and like I said, it's about two weeks in the fermentation and dry hopping and you know, all that. So I'm so, um, on canning day. You know, it's about four weeks old. Yeah. And uh, so that's quite young. Yeah, you know, it's quite young. Well, it changes a lot. Yeah, yeah. Put it in the fridge and I'll wait two weeks to drink it. Yeah, you know, wait a week or two. Yeah, it, it definitely changes. It gets better sometimes, sometimes. Yeah, it gets better for, I think, for a while, you know. It's yeah. sort of probably. It does change. It gets stronger. Like, you know, if it's since three months, I know I have one and it's real strong. It's a different taste. It's still good, but. Yeah, I mean, really, hoppy beers like this really should be drunk fresh. Yeah, right, right, right. right. Having said that, we had a can, oh, I don't know. Maybe six or seven months ago, that was two years old. We tried, <laughs> and it was yeah. still good. Yeah. That's, that's we always say, drink it now. Yeah. We're yeah. making more. Yeah. <laughs> you could be gone tomorrow. It's true. Right. It's true. Right. Don't right. save oh, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can see there's a picture of me up there looking down. Oh, oh. that's good. Come on. That's small. It's sophisticated. Yeah. Waste going to know because the grain's going to the farmer yeah. here, and uh, everything's getting well, you know, I think the green thing going to farmers is caught on a road. Most breweries are doing that now. But I think, you know, collecting the other ways is, you know, that's something that's going to catch on more and more. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to see the next five years.